Welcome back to the Nightlife Podcast, Season 3, Episode 22. 2 2 uno de mis números de la suerte. Um, all right, guys, so a lot of you have been asking that you want more women on the show. So I've been doing some digging, I promise, and I've been trying. Actually, this person specifically, I've been trying to get her on the show for a while, um, but it hasn't been that easy. Um, this is actually a good friend, somebody who's in the industry. She uh, currently as a bar bartender, or we'll get into that a little later. I met her as a, as a server waitress back in the day. We have worked together uh, in a few places here in Miami. Um, and since I know you just can't wait to meet her, I will just bring her in. How are you, my friend? ¿Cómo estamos? Hi. How are you? Bien, bien. ¿Y tú? Good, good, good. Bien, bien. Um, yes, yes. Gracias por tenerme, mi amor. No, 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 no. It's a pleasure. Um, so, anyway, let's start with your name because I have been actually having some um, struggles with saying your name in English. I'm like, so people, do people call you Judith, Judith, Judith? Like, what is it? And how do you use it? How do you like it? <laughs> It's so funny. No, I prefer people just calling me Judy. I feel it just makes it simple, straight to the point. Judy. But okay. it's with T-H at the end. So it's Judith. That's how you pronounce it. Okay, got it. All right, so, so yeah. Judy from Venezuela. Uh, what part of Venezuela? Caracas. Caracas, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. so, by, which, by the way, for I knew that a lot of Venezuelans were going to watch this episode. I am certain of that. So, oh, well, so I'm having, I'm yeah. not drinking alcohol right now. So I'm just having a little maltín por, <laughs> for you people. Um, anyway, alcohol for a while, please. I know, right? Like, actually, how long has it been since you've been, you know, not drinking? I mean, due to this, I suppose. Uh, since we started quarantine, that was what, March 17, I think? Correct. Well, it depends. So, yeah, to some exactly. people, it was a little earlier than that. To some, Remember, we are being heard all around the world so it depends on where they are they, they've I been know. quarantined a little longer uh, if they're in south america they're just getting started pretty much they think it's going crazy already but you know but it's, no, it's but different people Juli, like people as soon as quarantine started they kept drinking as either in their house or in a friend's house family gettys you know but i just felt like it was time for me to get a detox Right. Because every weekend I would literally drink at least one day out of the weekend. Right. Either Sunday or Saturday. Fun and right. everything. But my body just needed that, you know. Right. Detox, so, so so I know that everybody in Miami that is in the industry knows who you are. But we are being, we're, we're being hurt. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> all over. Yeah. We're being hurt, you know, listened to and watched all over the world. So why don't you tell um, the audience what 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 do you do in the industry when you started how long you've been in it and what you're doing currently okay so i started like about six years ago um in a very small club that used to be called the bank as a waitress downtown Miami. and then that was in downtown miami yes um and then from there is where i met you at a place called i went to Cucaramacara as right. a waitress as well correct and um From there, I went to Mansion. I have worked in Ruby, Baru, Candela. And the last spot that I'm working now is called El Patio Winwood, which is okay. very popular now because Winwood is, you know, the place to be now. Right. El Patio um, and everything that they're doing is, is has always been great, everything that all of them do. Actually, yeah. you were already on the podcast, but as background material, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you were doing some <laughs> drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, no, I, I interviewed. I, I wanted to be in the, I wanted to be in the interview, but my voice was really bad that day. I was sick. I remember. I remember. So back since then. So if you guys have an idea, when I interviewed um, Kata from El Patio, one of the owners, that is exactly the moment that I have been talking to to Judith about being on the mm -hmm. show. From then and, uh, on, and we've been waiting. So let's hope it's worth it. So right. And so so okay. ever since that interview. Um, We, I've been that was a to, long time ago, actually. It was. That it was, was like. It was. No, but was it in 2019? Or I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was last year. <laughs> this year has been Holy like moly. so crazy. We're in June. No, I don't. Need, let's, don't no? get me started with this year, okay? Right. <laughs> First of all, um, the forest going extremely mm -hmm. like bad and the whole fire. Then the whole World War Three. <laughs> now the Corona. Now the protests, and I, I just forget that I'm like, what is going on? Has people forgotten that we're supposed to like, keep distance? Right. But I see all these people like jumping around. That was, I think it was um Saturday. 
Right. I think it was Saturday that I saw like a bunch of people just running around the streets. I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, I it's, can't. It's, it's going I can't. crazy now. Um, so, all right. You are currently a bartender. Yes, at El Patio. What are, what have you heard, you know, now that we're going through this difficult time, what have you heard from, from ownership and from management? Um, have they let you guys go? Are, are, are you guys on, on leave of absence? Or is, was everybody fired? What, what's happening over there? Okay, so I don't know if you saw that there was an interview. Um, Caterina, one of the older owners, she came out on TV and she spoke about how they got the loan, you know, the, those loans for big businesses. Right. I mean, I don't remember the amount, but they're helping us. You know, a few people apply for unemployment. Those people got a letter and they let them go okay. to apply for unemployment. Right. And then other, which is like another part of us, uh, we are getting help from them. It's not the same that we used to get, obviously, but right. it's, anything helps. You know, so, at this point, we're not working and we don't know when we're going to open. Right. Honestly, and 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 the, and the issues, with- you know, in our industry, one of the issues, especially people that that do what you do, um, it's complicated. Entertainment, because, yeah, no, bars, but, yeah. but it's it's complicated because uh, you guys rely on tips, you know, and uh, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Like you know, like when you try to do the whole PPP, for example, help uh, from the banks and all that kind of stuff, it asks mm-hmm. you know how much you pay these people. But yeah, the minimum wage that you guys get as as you know servers or bartenders or anybody in the in the industry in the service industry does not cover, by all means, not even 5% of what you guys actually do take home. So in the end, whatever it I is, know. you know, um, and there's a lot of people that I understand for whatever reasons decide maybe not to report all of this and if some take cash home or whatever. Of so course. so when yes. th- something like this happens, it becomes a bigger issue because now you can't even tell anybody, oh, but I, you know, I used to make this much and I don't anymore. Yeah, but that's not what yeah, your taxes others- say. <laughs> Exactly, because a few of our tips, obviously, half of them were a little bit less than half is cash. So right. it's just tough because when you work in a type of environment where a lot of people just come around and I mean, they're obviously they're avoiding opening bars because at the end of the day, it's not essential. It's just something to have fun, which is obviously it's essential for us. But at the moment, it's not so. That is a discussion I have. A it's a discussion I've been having a lot with myself <laughs> and a with de- a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I. I Let's I, open a debate. Let's open a no, debate. No, like, it, honestly, <laughs> I mean, like, who says that it's not it's non essential? I mean, yeah, I understand. That's what I'm There's saying. some some ways of seeing non essential, but then then why do you think so many people are anxious and, you know, the anxiety level out there is, is crazy? And do you yeah, not believe that that's one of the things that we do? We are underpaid um you know therapist in the end you know how many conversations you have oh at a bar oh my god i i love that you said that because <laughs> it's so true that's why i'm like okay yeah you are in the hospitality industry but that has to do with entertainment too because at the end of the day when i'm at the bar i i, I not only like i like to take care of my clients and make everybody feel at home right I know sometimes it's a little difficult when it's super packed, but I remember their drinks or I'll dance or I'll make jokes or I'll even listen to whatever they are, they want to talk about. Right. So, I mean, that's there. There's psychological, there's like a psychological part to it. And it's sometimes right. Every, everybody brings that. everybody brings their problems to the bar, has a little conversation about you. You know about a lot of people's secrets. You get to see the real self you know a lot of people yeah a lot of people yes. are really their themselves the real real selves where when they're there they feel comfortable you know um not having to hide anything and and being completely honest and i feel like throughout my life i've been doing this 27 years i i, I understand throughout my life i i've heard seen so many things and i have kept so many to myself i, I you know i try not to share anything that i find out about anybody and it's one of the reasons that people want to come back you know they feel Okay, I can trust, they trust this. you. Exactly. And and as as well as you guys, you know, it's and it's the way it has to be, you know. But but I we, just feel and I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just just feel that a bar or a club is just somewhere that you just want to let go and disconnect for a little bit and mm-hmm. just loosen up. Cuz that's it, you know, loosen up whether it is to have a, a few drinks or a smoke a smoke a hookah or just listen to mu- music. Right. And network and vibe with people, not just be you know uptight and just forget disconnect that's that's what it is right so do you get in in the windwood area at, at el patio for example do you get a lot of people talking english and i bring this up because 
You know how hard it is for me to find somebody in the industry that speaks English in 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 the city and in the area that we work, of course. You know, I think I mentioned this to you before. Well, yes, I know. We spoke about this before. Um, honestly, I do. And it's funny because they think I don't know English. So right. when they're like trying to struggle and I see, I mean, I love the fact that they try to speak Spanish because they're like practicing, but I'm like, I'm sweet. I speak English. Like, right. You could tell. He's like, oh, por favor. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I speak English, don't worry. You know, but, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people... It just depends on the places. Yes, it depends. but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people that know you are going to be like, what? ¿Qué es esto? What I, do you mean? No, people that know oh, you that but they haven't know. spoken to you in English because of, you know, I mean, oh, because, because you don't pro probably use it. Yes, and here in Miami, it's, it's I guess, secondary. It's I second it's language difficult. now. Not no, usual. but honestly, it just depends on what place you go to because right. let's, let's say for instance there's a place called ragged i don't know right. if you heard yeah he's the same owner as foxo which i worked there for like a month actually yeah and um well this place there's they're they're mostly the most of the clientele they bring it's uh people that speak english right so it just depends Correct. i mean at patio we get a little bit of everything but most mostly spanish culture right so so let me ask you a question um, since you've been off, what have you been doing besides the two things that I know that you've been doing, which is, you know, uh, not drinking, detoxing, uh, taking care of yourself mm -hmm. and modeling? Because I see, by the way, guys, you got to go yeah. follow her. Tell them where they can follow you and, and go vote for you for Maxime. Um, yes, I'm actually doing the competition for to be in the cover for Maxime uh, 2020. And uh, yes, I've been like focusing a lot on my on, on creating new content because, I mean, it's not a secret. Everybody knows that I love modeling. It's just I never really put the I never really had the time. I was always working. So right. now I'm like training, taking care of myself, learning. I, I mean, I've been watching videos, tutorials, how to put better makeup or how to edit pictures, which because I like doing the, both being behind the camera in front of the camera, which people don't know that. So, okay. yeah, it's it's been nice. I like so it. you can follow me. My Instagram is Judith Acuna, A-C-U-N-A, A-C-U-N-A, one. Judith Acuna, one. There you go. Um, and definitely go vote for her for her Maxime uh, cover yes. 2020, which is almost over and we didn't even notice. Um, let me ask you. Um, oh, my God, for real. <laughs> let me ask yes. you a question. Have What are your plans when it comes to the industry? Are you coming back are you not coming back are you is this something that you can't get away from <laughs> you know i love how you said that i mean i enjoy a lot the environment i'm not gonna lie and you could tell i enjoy it i feel like that's something that you honestly feel when you go to the bar and i right. get like i understand there's a lot of people that say it's it's tiring i mean nightlife is just like sucks you in but I see the juice in it. Right. I like it. You have like, to. I've you have so got so many people. Hey, you have to love what you do, right? And if you love what you do, yes. it does not feel like work. You don't work a day in your life, and that's what exactly. I think we found in this industry, right? People that are in it and they're here, you know, they're here they for, in the wrong way. Yeah, we've been friends since since yeah, six that years. That was like what four years ago. It was more like no, four, five, five years ago. Five years, yeah. Five, yeah. And um, and and we've been through good and bad times. You know, we've been at clubs that yes. have done well and some that have done awful. And, um, That's correct. you know, and I think one of the good things about is this is also it, you know, you create like new, a new family. Like I know for a fact yeah. that you have one at, at El Patio right now because I know that they're, they're the same mm -hmm. way. Um, and we had one at, at Ruby as we tried to do at Cucara it was a little harder. Um, <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, and that's something I want to talk about, too. Sometimes for some reason in this industry, in the service department, you end up, and this happens a lot in Miami. I'm not sure if it's the same everywhere else, but I've seen okay. it in so many different clubs where you got, where you have like a separation, little, you know, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah, little groups. Yeah, groups that completely mean. separate and by, by either by nationality or by the way they, they, they dress or the way that they want to act or, or, you know, I don't know, yeah. but separation. like I, that. Have my, I have my own opinions with that. I just... Like, I'm going to give you an example. For instance, I feel like El Patio has such a strong team with a lot of experience. Which, okay. honestly, to me, that, that's what makes El, El Patio running so smoothly. 
Right. And everything's just smooth compared to other places. I'm not saying Rui wasn't smooth. I'm just saying once you have some type of experience and or you're willing to learn because that's one that's the other thing. You can have experience, but if you don't want to learn how the Simpson works in a place that you're new at, right. it doesn't flow the same way. So that's why El Patio, it's it's a second family. So I'm going to tell you we something. We have experience and we're very, very open. So this is an <laughs> industry, as you know very well, that where, where looks matter. Even though, I mean, yeah. we have the girls, we have the guys, you try to keep, uh, you know, especially the staff, the front of house, you try to keep it, you know, yeah. a good looking group of people. Right. And and for us back in Ruby, that was one of the, the big things, you know, Fede, my partner was he was, you know, animate it about the fact that he wanted to have a really good looking uh, team. So one of the That's things true. that makes that a little harder is because you have to find people like you that has both things. You have the experience and the looks and, and you, you know, and people and people you have the clientele, you have people that like your personality, all those things, you know, come to the table. It's hard, um, but it's complicated to have, you know, have them all. Um, it's true. So it's sometimes true. you have to go in other in other directions. El Patio is one that even though they do have, uh, you know, their main thing is really having the right person for the job. Somebody with the experience. Yes. You know? And exactly. It's important. Exactly. And I actually would no, give that honestly, as a tip to everybody out there who owns a bar or manages a bar yes. when you're hiring. I mean, yes, looks are, are, are great and important, but you know try to start from the other side make sure that they know what they're doing or like judith said mm -hmm. that they want to learn that's you know a big 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 factor that's that's a that's a big deal and i noticed that when i started working at night okay yeah i have the personality the looks but do you want to learn are you are you a um a fast learner are right. you willing to you know be behind somebody and just learn every single little tip you need to be a good listener like it's just it's effort that at the end of the day, if you enjoy making people happy, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna do great. Right. Because it's, it's service, customer service. That's know, what it is. You know what? You can apply that anywhere. Definitely. Like, something else. To be nice. Something else that I've seen is the groups, those groups that are created in the clubs. When Which when group? something no different groups just doesn't matter. Like if oh, okay, you know okay. if if for example a certain club closes, that group of people that get along usually end up going together to the same venue. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen it both Patio, planned and not planned. It's just you keep if you do you make that good relationship with people, I feel like you're going to work with them again. Like mm -hmm. for instance us, you know, you we know we knew each other from Kukura and then after that we worked at Ruby and it's just when you mm -hmm. have that good relationship with someone, you want to keep working with them because you're more productive, you make the environment better, it's just easier. Right. But it doesn't always happen like that because I worked at Mansion. Well, actually, it does. You know what? You're right because I worked. <laughs> <laughs> the people that I worked with at Mansion, I worked like literally only two days at Space once. Right. And it was the same people. So you, I guess you you tend to go yeah, back. Maybe maybe there's a little bit of you know recommendation. Hey guys, I'm gonna go apply over here. They're looking for. Yeah. Here. I'd love to work with you. Let's go together. That kind of thing. Or or maybe when somebody is interviewed, they go, hey. You should call this girl. She was great too. Whatever. Those things make that yeah. that happen. But I have also, you know, being on the on the ownership side too, I have also seen the fact that when when I'm gonna use an example, Ruby was doing great at a certain point in time, and when Ruby I was remember. and when Ruby was doing great, we had a great looking team. That let's say Joyce, let's say I yeah, and, and let's say that. 80% of the team was really good at their job and the other 20% that wasn't um, still tried, you know, but but in general, it was a good thing. Now, not as organized as I wish it would have been, but but when but everybody wanted to learn. Yes. No. Tried, so it was a know. good thing in that sense. But my point is, when we decided when that, when that was closed, the business was closed, mm -hmm. then um almost everybody started going in the same directions, same venues. But I realized that I the owners from like the competition at the time decided, you know what? We want to go after this team. We want to get this whole team over here. At, the, at first, we took a lot of you to Kukara, the second Kukara, or the third Kukara, actually. One across from American oh, Airlines, yes. which was there just for a little bit. But then after, I think almost everybody ended up at Candela and the Candela group. Um, you know. Yes. Oh my God. For real. Well, I started at Baru. 
Correct. That was the first one that went into Baru, the one under Candela. Right. And then little by little, little by little, um, Saide came in and all those girls. Right. But at the end of the day, it's just so way, like way easier to work with someone that you worked before because you already know their 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 movements, how they like work around you. Right. The good, the bad, easier. and the ugly. Definitely. Way easier. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But I remember that. Of course, when you guys closed. Let me ask you something. Yeah, I remember more than you guys, for sure. <laughs> let, the, let me ask you something. The, what is the hardest thing when it comes to, to keeping friendships in the, in the industry? What do you think is, is, is a hard thing? Friendships, especially. Because I well, know you have made good friends. I know you've made good friendships, but I know oh, it's yeah, hard. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I know also that it is hard. To keep them and the good ones, you know, like like you mentioned, Saide, for example, is somebody that I, you know, I adore, I respect. I, she's, I know she's been with us for a long time, and 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 you know, I wish she would have continued and kept on. But well, to tell you the truth, it's for me, it was just easier to be friends with someone that works inside the industry. But I do have, and I'm pretty sure you remember, I used to bring them as clientels, my other side of friends that are like not in the industry and yes it's tough and yes sometimes they even like complain to me like you never have time but what we call regular people honestly like like what we call (laughs) it's so funny because we do call in like that but i think uh i feel i'm normal but i mean it's just that we think (laughs) we are kind of it's you know it's It's a it's a different completely like it's a different world than anybody else and yeah I I know it 100 percent but you need you need to experiment there's there's a little bit of you know that the entertainment industry as you mentioned at the beginning you know um, Mm -hmm. I I I like to call it local celebrity in a way there's a little bit of that because locally you know everybody everybody knows you Um, Mm -hmm. even though we may not be in the situation that famous people may be when it comes to financial <laughs> but mm-hmm. hey but, but but by the way in the industry we don't do bad that is one of the reasons a lot of people don't want to leave it you know that's one of the reasons that's so exactly. hard it's so hard it's so easy to make money just by doing your job and doing it right if everybody works you know well you're going to make money in the industry if you if you do a good team you know you're right honestly you're going to do good that's why i feel about your works perfectly fine most of them have at least a minimum of one year experience right. and i'm talking about bartenders and waitresses Correct. or servers because we do have men servers you know right um and i feel the owner was all the owners were very smart when it, when it came to that decision you know and if you didn't have like i said that much of experience if you're willing to learn right you, you'll do your spine you know we had a but we all get alone and we had one bar in in bogota colombia where we decided that every bartender was going to be a man there was no girls at the bar, um, and I mean it was and not. That every bartender, what I'm sorry. All the bartenders were guys, guys. No girls at the bar. Oh, you guys decided that. For real? Yeah, and it was, and it How ended. It ended turning around into the guys started dancing on the bar and you know doing shows, taking off their shirts, all that kind of thing, <laughs> and it just. That's entertainment. But it became something that it was packed with women that wanted to see those guys at the bar, you know, and. Other men would come to the club to find those women that were looking at the guys. So it worked, you know, in that way. Maybe over here it's a little more complicated. People are a little more skeptic and they really want their girl at the bar to take care of them. I don't know. You know what I like, though? El Patio has men and women, Mm -hmm. like girls and boys. And that brings every type of clientele. Right. Correct. And I mean, like everything. (laughs) So... (laughs) It's just not, and I mean everything. So but it is, it is Winwood. Judith, you're there to see Arturo or right. any other guys. You know, it's it is, it is Winwood. So you have to be open for all types of clientele, correct? Yes, yes, we got it, everything. But it's nice, like I said, you meet so many interesting people. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine the people that I met during this time of like not only in El Patio oh, just I imagine. all throughout the years I imagine I imagine so, it's it's crazy. it's just nice I love networking that's something that I love I love doing I love networking talking to new people like what do you do so where are you from right it's just hey so since cool since we know that looks do matter what are what are your plans in the industry are you are you planning on staying long a long long term do you plan on growing like for example I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something Catalina you know I, I saw Cata 
you know, come from the bottom up in the industry to, to being she, a yeah. part owner of the El Patio and, and, and not just that, but partnering with, with who used to be her boss and, you know, are, and, are you asking me if I want to do the Patio 2.0? <laughs> well, I mean, you never know, but it's, it, yeah. but you're one of the few uh, that I know that really, that likes and enjoys the industry and could probably make something of it if she decided to go in that route, you know, but. But in general, yeah, I don't know what your plans are. I'm, I'm just saying, wondering if you're somebody that wants to retire in the next three years from this and do something else, or you want to do it longer and, and, and grow. To tell you the truth, um, during this time, yeah, like I feel like you always want to like, it's always good to learn more and want more. You just don't, to me, like if I stay in the industry, I want to keep moving forward. Correct. If your question is if I would like to be an owner, I've never really thought about it because now that I'm doing the whole modeling right. um, thing, I just, I, I have other visions. Am mm -hmm. I going to keep working at night? Probably just because mm -hmm. I, I do enjoy what I do, honestly. And people don't see maybe that it does take a lot to be a bartender. Mm -hmm. And, but at the end of the day, like, You just have to enjoy what you're doing. By the way. And I, I enjoy it a lot. By so the way. I wouldn't mind. Owner slash model works too, you know? It's 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 not like <laughs> yeah, it's not something that you can't models, that you can't imagine. do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give yeah. you a little tip on that because I am actually building a it's something that's called it's a membership. What? It's, it's the first time that I'm actually talking about this on on the show. Oh, But I am well, I am building a membership that it is actually to grab people from the industry and take them all the way to ownership you know and and it's wow. depending on how I long think... it takes for them whatever it doesn't matter oh, wait, Julio. oh my god what happened you're there i still see you you lost me are you there oh i'm here hey okay <laughs> I, froze yeah I I oh no no i never action. i never lost you we're, okay. you were there so um yeah so oh, as i was okay. saying so it's that's the idea is to build no, but um, I lost you. I'm sorry. So the well, idea is that is to, it, it grabs time. it grabs people from wherever they are in the industry and it helps you build towards being an owner. You know, I I mean, I started as a as a wow, as a promoter. Yeah. I mean, I started I at, at 18. Right. I mean, well, it was before. Yeah. That's where I met you. Right. But this was, you know, before before. Like I said, I, I started in. I knew you, but you, you don't probably remember me because we officially met in Cucaramacara. Correct. But I remember you. Yeah, we've been around for a while. <laughs> um, okay, so so yeah, so it's gonna be a membership to build, you know, bar and and club and pub owners and uh, pick your brain a little bit because I know you know a lot. Yeah, no, no, no. It's there's there's a lot of a lot a lot of experience there for sure, and and it's oh, good yeah, and no. bad, good and bad. I think one of the best things that we can definitely teach other people is the mistakes that we've made. You know. Bravo. Yes, that's so true. You always want to teach everything. 100%. Just so they don't make it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they will. It's just that now they know, oh, I, sh I shouldn't have. <laughs> See, that's why he told me. Because because in the end, a lot of times we want to make our own mistakes. But if, if somebody tells me, hey, that, don't do that, but I still want to do it, I'm going to be a little more careful before I do it, right? Um, if I still feel, because by the way, there is no right or wrong way. You know, it's just, oh, I know. there's so many different ways in this industry. You know how many things, how many crazy ideas Nicolás from El Patio has had and people have gone, what is he talking about? What? You know? I know, but once, but he's very creative. He is. I can, he I is. can tell you that. Yeah. And he's done it in, in a good way. But like you said, everybody has their own, they have their own mistakes, you know, and I don't know if it, you should try it when somebody tells you not to. But if you're, they shouldn't. They, if you're gonna, yeah. They shouldn't, but I'm if, gonna if, tell you why they try. Millennials, why? from millennials <laughs> on, there, mm -hmm. nobody's being born now with the chip of tell me what to do. They don't want to be told what to do. They they want to learn from you, but they don't want to be told how to do something. They they want to decide themselves from an early age. You know, they mm -hmm. they want 35 year old precedents around the world because they don't believe in that experience experience it's crazy there's some changes there wow mm. well no actually i'm not even surprised i you know i follow gary b i don't know if you know yeah of course heard of him 100 well and i seen in one of his videos like it's literally he, the the kid was like 13 years old and he was like so what do you do he's like i'm a youtuber and because that's i know what i want and i want to inspire people and like i just feel these kids are like right. growing up so fast mentally which right. is awesome 
not a bad. I don't. I don't think it's bad. No, no, no. But not at all. You know what? Sometimes... I, I do. I also do mentoring. <laughs> I also do mentoring uh, for for people that are okay. you know building any any you know anything related to this you know in this in this industry. In the industry. Yeah, and and I had somebody you know um, come to me and and ask for for help, and we were having conversations back and forth, and I didn't really know who I was talking to. Um, and, and this was one of the most mature conversations I have ever had. And somebody that seemed, really? you know, it just sounded like somebody that like really was understanding everything and doing everything. And, and they were super, super nice about everything. And like, thank Sorry to interrupt you. This was like, uh, text messaging or through Instagram. It or? was through Instagram, but there was no pictures. There was like, it was more like other, other stuff, but there was no pictures of the person or whatever. So I didn't really know who I was okay, talking to at the beginning at the beginning of our conversations. Then it went into emails and we were back and forth emails and all that. Okay. And in the end, when we finally end up having a, uh, you know, face to face conversation, this was uh -huh. uh, from China, actually Hong Kong. And, and he is 17 years old. And, no way. And, and and a 17 year old who already has three different venues. I, I just I mean, yeah. Whoa. Things are that's changing. Amazing. So so basically if you I, want it. But I like it. Honestly, yeah. I don't feel uncomfortable. I actually like it because you know, at the when you're 17, I don't even remember what I was doing. Probably playing outside, you know, one of those games, La Ere, te acuerdas? Oh. <laughs> the hide and go seek. I don't even know, I don't remember. Right. But maybe it's a it's a good thing. The, the, Faster you learn, younger, the better. One hundred percent. you make those mistakes earlier, faster. you get more time exactly. to get back up because you are gonna fall. We all fall at exactly. some point. You know, it is life. It'll happen. I don't. I don't think there's anybody who's just always been going up and up and up and never falling down. You know. No, yeah, but you need to fail sometimes yes. to learn and appreciate things. Or yeah, it's gonna make you stronger. Not to do it again. It's just yeah. It makes you a lot stronger like that. Definitely. Nobody's perfect. So, all right. So I'm, I want to come back to COVID, you know, coronavirus. What's going on right now? Yeah. I, I want to, yeah, no, I, I, I want to, I was wondering what, what are the plans? What are the plans? Have you heard anything yet? You know, you told me at the beginning of the conversation that you don't even know when, but do you know any of the things? You're talking about when we're going to, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're talking about when are we going to reopen? Right, right. Windwood area, anything? Well, God, I don't know. Nothing, right? Well, no, actually, no, no, no. I've seen a few places. I actually, um, I think it was this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. I was running some errands, and one of my good friends um, told me they're reopening at Taqueria, right. which is at Bandalo. Like they built a little, how do you call it, a wall, and they kind of separated to make it a small little taco place right. with a bar. So that that's open. I don't know if if if, if it's open every day, but. Right. Yeah, Shota. That was open. It's a really nice place. Shota is the next interview after you. Oh well, he's really cool. And oh, and the his other place. Um, Dirty Rabbit. Bar or what? No, no, no. Yeah, well, he, that they open as well. So it's, it's mainly people that have nice. food. I mean, we are open. We I don't I don't think I have told you, but we just opened a restaurant in downtown. Uh, it's called Pes. Oh. And uh, it's I Mexican know. food, uh, but the the issue is, we just opened. But then now the riots, <laughs> so the curfew, and uh, so so we decided, curfew. you know what, just back back home again. It's, there's we're gonna be opening only so on the So when are you planning? Are you just gonna wait for? We're the, waiting uh, for the riots. To end? Yeah, yeah, but okay. but but with all the social distancing things, you know, six feet apart tables. People have to wait outside for their table. They have to wear a mask no, inside. No, no, you can't. Yeah. There's so many things that you have to do, and especially in this area. Yeah, yeah, you just have to. You just have to. Um, and, and, and again, we're never going to know what happened, what's up, what's going on. People are going to be saying, you have some people saying one thing, some people saying another, whatever it may be. The point it is, is that it's out there and, and we have to, it's happening. You know, no, this is yeah, real. I exactly. just feel that people are not taking it as serious, right. but it pisses me off because I'm here at home or if I go out, like I take all the precautions that, that I have to hand sanitizer, cover my mouth, right. six feet apart. Um, why are other people on top of other people or getting together like big groups? Like they're not being cautious. Like honestly, like right. can you can you can everybody just think about us from the environment that we work in right. the industry that we need to open as well? Like you know what I do so believe. Careless. What I do believe. <laughs> I don't want to be dramatic, but it bothers me. A hundred percent. But um, I, I I agree with you. But 
what I do believe is that we are going to come back different after this. Like, I'm I'm actually sure. even a, a little bit afraid when I go out there. I'm like, how weird, well, right? Yeah, it's, it's the it, weirdest it, feeling. It, it, can you feel it in the, in the environment? Yes. And in, like, in the air? It's so yeah, it's weird. Just, well, right I, now I'm in the balcony. It, <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's, mouse, it's a different <laughs> a different planet, and you feel it wherever you are. It's, it's it, feel weird. Um, you know, and, but, like, with my family, I'm so much closer right now. You know, I've spent so much time with the kids, for example, with Me, my wife, yeah. you know, and, uh, with the rest of the family even if it's through zoom but but we've been having so much more conversations than we used to you know so i'm glad if about a lot you're glad that what i'm saying i'm not I'm saying I'm, I'm just i'm glad about a lot of it you know i'm just concerned about the financial That's side what i was going to tell you i know i know it's just you just have to try to be as positive as you can and if right. you're um everybody deals with it differently i feel like there's a lot of people that obviously felt really bad about it and have gone to a depression or you know the situation i know it's tough right but you could use you could value this time and get closer to your family i don't know read a book right practice yoga whatever you wanted to do when you mm -hmm. didn't have time before just do it clean your closet i don't know <laughs> i'm giving <laughs> ideas here but and what do you but, think is going to yeah. be the next thing i'm hoping we don't get any hurricanes or like most people are oh, saying right now so so in july we so. get extraterrestres <laughs> et is coming home uh, no, no, no 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 don't even play around like that but i do i do feel that there's something out there right. i mean oh i believe uh, in it i have my i have my yeah that's my a that's a different podcast but i believe spirit. in it i believe in it no i do <laughs> yeah but i don't know what's the next thing i think it's i don't want to be negative so i i just I hope hopefully by the end of July, things are gonna start changing because seriously, yeah, we need uh, we need we need yeah. social the social side of the equation. I think one of the things one of the reasons that it's gonna help our industry, you know, in coming back, um, people are gonna go crazy. <laughs> people want to see each other again. People want up. people want hugs. People want to you know. It's not gonna be enough to swipe right or left on an app anymore. People are gonna want to be able to see other people and connect again, and they're probably realizing Look, this. And they're gonna appreciate it more. A hundred percent. You know, and, they, and I've been at home. The end of the day, we're affectionate. We love. Yeah. Especially, well, Hispanic people. It, we're very warm. Question. We love the whole. Yes. Question. Are you are you by yourself, or are you? Do you have roommates or anything, or are you by yourself, at home? No, I live with my mom. Okay, so mom. so at least you have your mom. But I have spoken to some people. I hadn't even thought about it, but I have spoken to some friends that are completely alone, and I just cannot imagine, because at the imagine. beginning they would. They're say like oh i'm so sorry for you guys you have to be with your wife and your kids all day at home whatever i'm like whatever dude no, and now mean, and no. now they're like oh yeah i'm so sorry you got to be with your playstation all freaking day you know that's all they're doing <laughs> it's, it's seriously Honest, no but i'm pretty sure i mean like i'm pretty sure somebody has to visit them right like maybe a close friend no i'm, I'm hoping if, i'm well. hoping i mean People need it. People need so it. And, and I think that's what, one of the reasons that it's going to help our industry. That's why one of the reasons I know we're going to, you know, come back strong. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the way I, I, I feel about it, which I am nobody to know, but just the feeling is that it all has to do with the, the vaccine. The minute it comes, then things start to change. We start going out there. We are ready to go out there a little bit now just because of the fact that you have more, you know, available to take care of people at the moment because it's not overcrowded anymore, the hospitals or whatever. Yeah, but of course. you don't want those riots going on at the same time because it just could get worse. You know, we numbers are going to go up again, most likely. But anyway, I'm hoping, sure. I'm hoping, you know, this whole thing slows down. I know it's not a hoax for sure. You know, a lot of people think it is. Um, I, I think, I think we're going to have to, well, I haven't seen so many people outside as uh compared to saturday right but i'm hoping it's just people start because it's getting violent honestly like yes. one thing is to pro uh, protest and another thing is to go by by um sorry <laughs> i'm getting stuck because i've seen videos how they're like destroying stores like, right, right 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 that's not right that's you're not giving the right image you're not projecting your your the the, the fact that you're projecting about Violence is not, it's already bad. Like, that's not the right message. Right. So, right. I mean, and, and, let's just hope it stops. And because... we and we will never understand what they're, the hurt, the feel, you know, what they're really feeling because we haven't lived it. 
but um but definitely i i believe there's a lot of you know i think they just need leadership right now that's what it is and and it's what the whole country needs you know the, and i'm just talking yeah, about the country but this is a world <laughs> issue now no i know but you know i've seen a lot of um images in, in, on instagram like comparing it to martin luther king mm -hmm. during those times you know he was obviously projecting the same thing equality like right. this is so bad no racism he never got violent with nobody right yeah, my, my dad lived here. My, my dad you lived here. To be violent. My dad lived here uh, oh, really? in '69 in, in, in Louisiana. Yeah, and um, wow. yeah, and he was actually talking to me about it and about and, and about how much he's feeling like things are going in the direction of what happened after he was killed. But you know what? You know what's the problem when people when we when you don't learn about history, it repeats itself. A hundred percent. That's a fact. A hundred percent. That's a fact. So if you yeah. don't even. It doesn't matter where you're from. By the way, I feel like I'm I, I feel like I'm at El Patio at the bar having a drink and we are having a client to bartender see? conversation. Um, and this is kind of what I do on my job. Honestly. Right, right, right. I, I just wanted people to know that that, um, you know, I know a lot of you get that are listening. Our bartenders and already know this or managers mm -hmm. or are in the industry. But for those people that are not. Um, this pe By this guys do a hard job. Know me, I love talking or <laughs> listening to as well. <laughs> now and now and now they know. So so yeah. Yeah so no, I'm very open when it comes to any topic. If I don't like, but yeah, the whole point is that this is kind of how how it goes down in a bar. <laughs> Correct. But um, where do you draw the line when it comes to the conversations or when a client gets you know too frisky? What what, I, what are the? Line? Where do you draw a line? When they get out of line, that's what I meant. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know if it's the way that I, I interact with people, but I barely get that, to tell you the truth. Right. Uh, I don't get rude people. And if I do, I know for a fact that's not because of me, it's because of them. Okay. And it doesn't go because of a conversation. It's more like when I'm super busy and honestly, it, it gets to a point sometimes that I cannot get to you right there and then. Right. I do try to be like, I'm, I'm sorry, give me a few minutes, I'm taking care of somebody, but right. it's just people that are very, they're on patience, so they just want the drink now. <laughs> right. That's when so, I get rude So people, a, tip, a tip for new new peop, new bartenders out there would be the fact that, you know, you attract what you are, what you're giving, what you're showing, right, in a way. So for if, sure. If you're going to be flirtatious, yes. they're going to come back flirting at you too. You have, I mean, and I understand there has to be a little bit of it, you know, there has there's a, there's a there, there has to be what I'm sorry. No, there's. I'm. Say, I'm saying there's a little bit of that flir flirting in the industry. There's a little bit of the smile. It's just, or or is it that people take it the wrong way? How do you see it? It's the environment that makes people think that flirting and you know getting really, really yeah lovey dovey. It's right. okay. It's not okay. Like I'm, right. I'm still human. I'm there doing my job honestly. Do I like making people people feel good about them, like around me? Yes. Right. That makes me happy. It makes me happy to see you smile. Trust me. It it does fill my heart. And I think that's that's a tip because you asked me to give somebody, you know, a new bartender uh, a tip. That's that's my tip. Right. If you are there to do your job, make sure that you're giving great service and that the person is smiling, is having a good time. Because if not, you're not doing your job unless. The person has a bad day, which it happens. Right, it happens. But don't take it personal, you know. It's correct. Have you everybody ever? Has their day. Have you ever been told by a boss, "Go smile at that client, go be nicer," you know? Never. Okay. Never. So that's a good Hamas. thing. Hamas. So you had you had good <laughs> yeah, bosses <no>. then. <laughs> it's a good but thing. Actually. In the <laughs> like no, yeah. now that you say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about this part. I'm like, wait, hold on. Okay, no. let me look back in history. Now. In the beginning, when I was I was starting at the bar in Ruby, there was somebody that would always go around and go like this. He would never tell me to smile. He would just smile, smile. to remind me to smile. Yeah, that I would. think you know him. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, obviously, during the stressful part, you Correct. you tend to forget. Oh, hundred percent. But and I think we have got to wear a smile all the time in this industry. You have no idea how many times I've been at a club and I don't want to be there at that moment in time. Oh, and, and believe me, like I'm, in, I'm in a position where I'm doing, you know, PR with everybody at all times, 
you know, it's it's so complicated to keep a smile. I used to smile. You're very smiling. No, I I, ha I have to, and I have to. You know, it's like part of my personality and my. It's your essence. And in yeah, the business, in the business you're, too. You're very like that. Right now, when I'm behind the door, closed door, and it's work time and and meetings, you know, I'm 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 the one that everybody hates to sit down and talk business, honestly. Um, Mm, it is. I I'm, mean, you know, I'm not talking about the staff, but when it comes to okay. like with the partners, partners or any anything like that, you know, anything when it's negotiations or anything like that, I, you know, you got to be a little bit of a shark, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, for people to take you serious, you have to obviously have a serious face on. If not, correct. Then correct. But the minute we cross that door where the clients are, it just I know. we have to. We have to. I know. I remember. So, I remember. I am so thankful for your time. We were supposed to be talking for 30 minutes and it's been 45 minutes already. So, oh wow. Yeah. Exactly. Um see you talk a lot. You talk you talk a lot. So that this is definite proof about what bartenders do at a bar. It's just a complete conversation yeah. about wherever the conversation goes and that's what I wanted to have with you because I, you know, d during these times people need to, you know, de-stress a little bit. Um I wanted you to give a little a few tips to to those uh, out there, uh, but mainly I want to make sure that we send a message out there, um, you know, letting people know that this industry is not dying. It may evolve a little bit or for a little time, but we are not going anywhere. People need oh, no, this, perfect. you know, perfect. and it's going to continue. And yes, I agree with you. over the years, it's changed in many ways. And maybe we are going in a direction where the heavy nightclub with all the dark lights and all that kind of stuff is not what people want. And maybe that comes back in 50 years, but it is. We're gonna, uh, we're, things are going to change for the better. That's for a fact. Correct. To me, like, we're just going to see this as we... We're like you said, we're going to come back stronger. We're going to make a few changes, of course, adjust to the system because at right. the end of the day, we want everybody to feel comfortable that you know that right. nothing's going to happen. And when I'm talking about the whole COVID, uh, COVID right. thing, but um, but yeah, no, definitely, we're not dying. There you it's go. just a, a little pause. <laughs> there you go. Hey guys, so I thank you uh, for watching. And again, why don't you tell them where they can follow you and go vote for you? Of course. Okay, so you guys could come into my Instagram. My Instagram is Judith Acuna One. If you're in Miami, you have to go to El Lake. Patio, no? El Patio at Winwood. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And come see her so. at the bar. Remember to vote. Go vote. Vote for Please, her. Please vote. Uh, and you remember? Thank you for having me. No, no. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, you can follow me at the Nightlife uh, Entrepreneur on Instagram, nightlifepodcast.com, where you find all the episodes. You find uh, the book, The Nightlife Entrepreneur, on Amazon and all the courses, membership, everything that is coming at nightlife.university. And see you guys next week.